Thanks for stopping by. I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not a knitting tutorial, but a means to have something playing in the background while you work on your own knitting project. If you're like me and really enjoy YouTube, you find that a lot of the content you like to watch is very visually engaging, so you're several hours into watching videos and haven't gotten nearly as far along in your knitting project as you would have liked to. So that's where I come in. And if you're new here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. It's actually like midnight uh, Sunday morning right now when I'm filming this. I had a, a long, lazy day. I was doing a lot of laundry and just kind of loafing around, doing some other stuff. But I did plan on filming this weekend. And tomorrow uh, I have my book club and a holiday party I'm going to afterwards. So it won't be a Sunday filming. And pretty much Saturday is gone now. So here we are. Today's video, I'm actually going to be going over my baby blanket that I'm knitting for my partner's friend. Well, he has two friends that are expecting very soon, but one is due to have um, her birth in a couple weeks, if not like next week. And I wanted to make sure I got my blanket done so the baby wasn't like three years old by the time I finished it. And I had only just found out about the due date. Uh, not that long ago and some of my other videos I did mention that I thought it would be nice to give her a gift from somebody here in the States. She is a Japanese native and her husband is here for business and she is a traditional um, housewife. It's very common in Japan for women to marry and become housewives and that is what she does. But it's going to be real crazy once her son is born. And I thought it'd be a nice gesture to knit her a blanket. And after poking and prodding my partner to get more details about when she's due, if she's having a boy or girl and all that good stuff, it was already way too late in the game for me to have this done um, by the time he knew she was going to be having a baby. So here we are. I'm going to make do with what I have, what I know. And I bought all my yarn from Love Knitting. I think it's like Love Knitting and Love Crafts. Like Love Crafts is like the main website and then Love Knitting is like one of the subsets of it. But if you're curious about the yarn, I am using um, this very pretty kind of like sea foamy green blue. Let's see, what's it called actually? It's Baby DK by Paint Box Yarns. And it is 100% acrylic, machine washable. This is, I wonder if they give us like an actual, oh, I'm sorry, it's not 100% acrylic. It's 45% acrylic, 55% nylon, and the color is 732, but I'll link in the description all of the colors I'm using for this particular blanket. Um, I reorganized this room so the rest of the yarn is stowed away, but where's my pattern? So this magic number blanket is the pattern I'm going off of. It was a free Ravelry download pattern that I was able to get, and it is by Helen Cro Cosgrove Davies, and it looks like it's a pretty simple pattern to do. I was making sure I was filtering what my... Um, facets were when I was searching for patterns that were going to be easy to knit. I originally was going to use a different DK yarn, but after looking at more colorways and other products and brands, I decided to go with a, a more baby, like pastel -y, very common pastel -y color scheme instead of like bright greens that I had sought out originally. Um, so yeah, this pattern I will also have below, so you're welcome to uh, use it yourself. And so yeah, it's knit on the bias, which I believe is indicating it's a point, and you're increasing every row, and then when you get to the largest portion, you're decreasing. And I need, um, I need 120 stitches across in this color before I switch to that middle color. So once again, it's like a three color way. You could do probably any one you want for like stripes. And I'm choosing this nice cream color as the um, middle color and then a lighter green as the, as the ending color. I think, yes. 
Yes, it is a lighter green. I'm looking at it and it's very much more like a seafoam green color. So I have the stopper because I've been taking it with me to work. And yeah, let's just get right into it. So I'm hoping everybody's having a good Sunday if you are watching this on Sunday when it is live. Otherwise, I hope you're having a good day or night wherever you are today. I've had a lot going on. I feel like I've just been going a mile a minute to to get everything finished. And I am so happy to say that I am just about finished with that massive blanket that I've been working on for my partner's family. I am on my last ball of yarn. And in my previous video of it, I made a pinned comment to express that I realized that I bought more yarn than I needed considering how the pattern was going. I honestly just kind of made up the pattern, but what happened was is that I originally bought six balls of yarn of each color. So my purple, my darker gray, and my lighter gray, and then what happened was I knit all six of my purple first, and I realized that the blanket, if I was going to knit six of one that, of color, adding the other six was going to make it a lot shorter than I originally intended it to be. So I bought some more yarn. I think I bought three more, and this is all just continued yarn, by the way. Not this video, but my big blanket that I have in my knit ahead for the holiday series. So I bought like three more balls of that yarn, realized it was the wrong dye lot because you really couldn't match it at that point because it was just based on what they had available as a closeout yarn. And the dye lot was slightly different. So when you see the final product, even when I've showed it on um, thumbnails and just kind of given you guys an idea of my progress with that one, you can see that the, the first chunks are very much, I think, lighter or darker than the rest before it continues on to that dark gray. And thankfully, because I knit them in chunks, it wasn't like every two balls or something where it was a lighter or a darker color. So it's consistently all a group of a light purple and a group of a dark purple. And so I was like, okay, well, now that I really know I'm not going to have any more of this yarn available, I knit my, I knit this middle gray, so the dark gray. I used up all six balls of yarn for that, and I still had my lighter gray to do. So I've done three balls of that one now, and maybe four. I can't remember now. No, 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 yeah, three, because, uh, I'm on the third, and if I'd used a few more than the last two, I should have a little bit less of a gray, a light gray to do than the others. So when you guys see my block party video, you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about in its full form. But Saturday, this upcoming Saturday, is the deadline for me to have everything <laughs> done like to have it ship priority mail for it to get where it's going on time i need to have it in the post office ready to go on saturday so woo, down to the wire i'm still blocking some things i have the blanket to block and two more gifts so i should be getting those done tomorrow well i say tomorrow i mean later today probably when i get home from the party because it ends at 6. And actually, just to let you know, I did 75 of these. So I have my stitch counter now that I'm within range to go up to 99. So I'm going to do one here. So when I get to 45, I'll know I have 120 stitches all the way across. And I'll double check too, because if you've watched my other videos, you know, sometimes things don't always go the way I plan them to. So even if I'm using my row counter, I'll go ahead and do a hand count as well, just to make sure 
that I have all 120 stitches on because that's when I can switch to the lighter color and then carry it over with the striping pattern. So let me know, oh, are you guys all done with your knitting for holidays? If you knit for gifts for people, have you finished everything you needed to do? I'm thinking of if I want to start this series over again for next, well, the 2020 holiday season, but considering now that I've had so many learning opportunities with what I've knit for this year, I think I'm just going to scale it back. I have so many that projects I want to knit for myself that I'm not going to have time to squeeze those in. And those I've been keeping on the back burner for a long time to make sure I got all my holiday stuff done. Because I bought a cardigan pat, a kit last year from Wool in the Gang, and I really want to use that. And then I have all these pattern books with all this cute stuff that I want to make for myself. So... I'm going to try to keep it really light and easy next year. And if I think, if I'm thinking wisely, if I have about 10 people to knit for in my family, if I knit one project a month through the year for at least them, and even if they're little ones, then I should be on track instead of starting in May like I did this year. So we'll see. Like pepper them in with my other personal projects. So you guys will be all clued in on what I'm doing with those very soon. But so excited. We'll be off of work very soon. Um, this week is my last full week and then I'll be will be closed between Christmas Eve and New Year's Day. And my partner said that they are taking some time off too. So, very exciting. We haven't had days off together, you know, besides like weekends and a while, besides Thanksgiving. And, but, of course, if you watched my other video, you know that they went um, out of town to see some relatives for the holiday and they didn't want to wait until I was out of work, so they left earlier than I could get out of work. And so we spent Thanksgiving away from each other. Which wasn't all that bad, because, you know, I was hanging out with you guys, so that was fun. And I got a lot of knitting done. But speaking of spending time with you, I want to let you know about my channel. So... I, if you haven't watched before, my partner belatedly gifted me with a camera for my birthday, and it arrived. I showed it to you guys in my last video. However, it is missing some things to actually make it work for me and what I'm doing with it, i.e. take the footage off of the camera and put it on my computer. So I made a purchase of a cord. It's like an interface cable that I can hook up to the camera and then hook that up to the computer so I can get the files off of the memory card. I also bought a memory card reader so that I can just pop the memory card out on occasion and plug that directly into the computer. And I got a, a microphone, like a lavalier one, that should work with this brand of camera. Because I brought it from a trusted vendor, so I'm hoping, because it wasn't just like some third-party seller on Amazon, that it actually worked this time for me. So we'll see. We'll see. The last thing I need were two things are, uh, or three, I guess, my partner noticed that the camera didn't come with a lens cap, so I need a lens cap, a bag to actually keep it, because I just have it in, it's not even in my canvas bag, but I had a canvas bag I received as a free gift from a knitting event, and it's just draped over it, 
It was actually a canvas back for my pom-pom making class, now that I think about it. And it's sitting on a table in here. But I don't have a protective case that has padding and everything. I also don't have a sturdy of a tripod because this one I'm using now is very lightweight. Not to say there's anything wrong with that, but considering how heavy the camera is and that it'll be on a tilt so you can see me sitting down, I don't think that's the best idea. <laughs> so I really don't want it to, you know, come flying at my head or into my lap or onto the floor because the, the setup isn't strong enough to support its weight. So this is actually, besides, so to, to get the increase, the, you knit three stitches in and then you KFB and then you knit to the end. So that's how we're getting, and I'll show you guys here when I finish this row, you get a little bit of a border pattern, which I didn't really notice until I was a few, eh, maybe like 10, 10 rows in. I was like, oh, okay. I couldn't really, I mean, it shows up in the, the picture, but to actually see it come to life, you're just like, how does it happen? You know, the magic of stitching, stitch work and all that good stuff really can help make a piece that seems boring really pop just based on you know a little bit of texture so I thought it was pretty cool so let me show you guys okay so you see we have this this is where you get that KFB part and then we have the regular part so let me hold it like if it was a corner of a blanket it'd be like this very nice and i've been using that technique that i saw on um, sheep and stitch where when i cast on the next row i knit i carry um i knit with the yarn tail to kind of help weave it in like so handy I've been doing that with the big blanket too and I like that I think I'll do that forever <laughs> I did it with the socks um, actually I did it with the second rainbow sock that I'm knitting for my brother's fiance so I thought that was pretty pretty neat trick because I hate hate weaving and ends and if I can save a little bit of a tail by adding it to my knitting, I'm like, okay, I'm on board. So at work on Friday, we're having a holiday party and a silent auction. And last year I bid on this cat. There was this, um, department that assembled like a cat theme basket it had like a whoo oh my gosh Ooh, there you go it had a cat theme basket with cat toys a bed some treats and stuff and i was outbid so i'm curious of what is there this year I mean, usually there's a lot of really good stuff. The The ladies who were working on the planning committee were having lunch in the lounge on this Friday when I happened to be working on this. I had a moment, oh my gosh, I've been training this new person and I haven't really had time to knit at work and I've been bringing this with me every day. But the ladies were in the, the room talking when I was having my lunch break and were mentioning all of the different table settings they were doing and I had donated for my department some little socks that you put on the bottoms of like you put them on your chair legs you could put them on table legs but they're shaped like cat feet and they're super cute and I used like the black and the gray ones like I bought a set and I used the black and the gray ones for my own home and then there were some orange like tabby color stripey ones that I didn't really use so I had them still in the packages from when I bought them 
years ago, at least a couple years ago. And so I, I fished them out of my drawer and brought them to work. And my one of my coworkers really liked them. So I think she's going to bid on the little basket with those as the goodies. But she put them in some highlighters, so I don't know if people are going to know they're actually for chairs or think they're like cute, like pen cozies or something. Oh man, I love how fast this is going. Like, I feel like, plus, because it's a baby blanket, it's just a teeny tiny thing. But the fact that, I don't know, something about knitting this versus knitting the really big blanket that I have is a little more enjoyable. Maybe it's because I know I'm going to get through it faster. Don't know. I've never knit for a baby before. <laughs> like, I just thought it'd be something fun to try. But so far, so good. And I'm sure, like, knitting baby anything is easy because it's tiny, so it'll go by a lot faster than knitting like a hum like a grown up size sweater versus a baby sweater or you know baby socks and baby hat and things like that so but babies grow so fast it's like come on man can you not for like 3 seconds so i can finish my project please <laughs> and then you spend all that time knitting and you know 3 days later the baby's too big to fit what you you knit for them so do you just have like a hope chest or something to pass it on to the next baby? Like, what do you do? What do you do? And that's the kind of thing that I'm not really too sure I want to continue knitting for this child because I'm, we know I'm slow and they're going to grow so fast. But I mean, blankets you can keep forever. Use as other stuff, I guess. Just like as decoration, but you know, baby socks. What do you, what else are you gonna do with baby socks or like baby pants or a baby onesie? You know. But I do like the the pretty light colors here. Uh, I got some in lilac too for a different blanket for my partner's friend who's expecting a girl. I wanted to keep it neutral, but I, I thought about yellow. But at this particular site, they were having a really good sale on this paint box yarn. It was like, it was like 30% off or 40% off or something like that. And it was already really cheap. So, um, of course, the yellow, all the yellow shades I could use for like a gradient or out of stock. So I decided to go with purple, even though I kind of wanted to do it like a gender neutral color, not to say that they're going with gender neutral for their child, but so that if they decide to have a third baby or want to pass it on to, you know, a friend or family member, then they would have a blanket that could go to anybody and it wouldn't necessarily have to be a boy or a girl. And I think that's why, I don't know, my mom, when I was a baby, she decorated my room with uh, seafoam green. She really liked green, so it was, everything was like light green for me. And it's funny because I gravitate, not like green's my favorite color, but like this. It's kind of blue more than green, but uh, those light kind of green colors are really nice. I like them, like mint green kind of. Seafoam green, mint green, I like those. But I like greens in general too. They're just not my favorite color. Definitely blues and teals. Like even, even my sweats, <laughs> even my sweats are blue today. And my shirt. It says how to kill a mockingbird. By the way. I got it a long, 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 long time ago online. But I think it's so funny. <laughs> so we'll probably just finish out this row. Talking your ear off for so long. But I did want to get on here today to chat with you guys. 
just a little update on what's been going on and let you know that even though you don't see a knit ahead for the holiday series video today I am just about finished with everything and I couldn't be happier I I was sweating I was like oh my gosh this blanket's gonna take forever and then I looked at it, I'm like wait a minute I don't have to knit all six balls of yarn because I have this color block where each chunk is getting a little smaller than the chunk before it so it makes sense to have the last one a little shorter than the second or the first and second so it'll make sense when you see it but the question is do I block it I was reading this article online and you know I only read one and and the woman who who wrote it was like you want to block it because it makes it look more polished but I'm thinking I could if I didn't need to share this room with my partner I could easily block this just by pulling this is a futon by the way I could just pull this futon out lay the blanket flat piece of cake but this is a multi-purpose room and I can't just leave it lying out undisturbed for three days or so while the the yarn dries and it is wool so it'll take longer than what I have time for so can't do that but I might I don't know I don't know I mean it's long enough like the shape of it right now as it stands is fine but just to kind of give it a little bit of a a worn in feeling like a little more la uh, slack to the stitches a little softness but it is so warm I've been knitting it and it's so big I just leave it on my lap while I knit now and oh I get so warm I wish I could keep it for myself but next time next time so we're at the end thank you so much for sticking around with me this time and I'll catch you on the next one Bye.